Uh, good morning, I'm Jack Berryman, ACSM historian, and we're here this morning talking with uh, Jeff Pottiger as part of ACSM's uh, Distinguished Leaders in Sports Medicine and Exercise Science. So thanks, Jeff, for coming. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Jack. I know it's a busy few days for you. <laughs> it is. It does get a little hectic. Um, so what I wanted to do was start off with um, where you're located now uh, professionally, academically, and uh, also your current roles within the American College of Sports Medicine. Uh, and then we'll drop back and talk a little bit more about your earlier years and work our way back up to the present. Okay, sounds great. Uh, currently, I am a faculty member at Grand Valley State University. I'm in the Department of Movement Science but I also have the pleasure of being the Dean of the Graduate School. Uh -huh. And some additional responsibilities, I am the uh, authorizing institutional official for all research activities wow. that go on at the university. That's some responsibility. It, it, it is. Uh, it's not anything I ever thought I would do, you know, starting out 30 years ago. Yeah. And I've just recently picked up an additional responsibility as the university's research integrity officer. So I wear a number of different hats yes, at do. the university, and it, and it keeps me moving. Wow. Uh, very few days are dull. How many, uh, so you're dean of the graduate school. Correct. So this is, this is every department that has a graduate program. Correct. Okay. So we have 40 graduate programs wow. at Grand Valley, uh, spread across liberal arts and sciences, education, health professions, nursing. Uh, and it's really exciting because I have the opportunity to be with folks from cell and molecular yeah, biology yeah. one day and English That's the next. That's exciting. Yeah, it really is. What, now, what, what town is that? In, or, well, or, our main where, campus where? is in Allendale, Michigan. Okay. But most of our graduate programs are in Grand Rapids. And how far geographically uh, are we? About 12 miles. Sir, are you in Grand Rapids physically? I am physically? in Grand Rapids, then, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And your department's there? No, my well? department is actually out in Allendale. Okay. Uh, so so I, I split time between the two campuses, I see. Uh, probably three or four days a week downtown at my primary office, and then about a day or two out on the Allendale campus. So are you still actively teaching as well? With I the taught administration? a class about three years ago, and it was a challenge mm -hmm. to work it into the schedule. I, that's why I ask. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people that have made that shift and they have a difficult time coming back to Well, it's, it's, I'm still responsible for 100% of my activities as dean, mm -hmm. and then you have the additional 25% that you add on to that to teach a class. Yeah, what happened to the 100%? <laughs> exactly, <Now it's> a... <laughs> exactly, yeah. But it okay. was a lot of fun. I felt it was very important to still remain engaged with the yeah, students. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, I get to visit with the graduate students on a regular basis, but this was actually an undergraduate course that I taught. And so it allowed me to maintain contact with uh, a different population. Mm -hmm. You know, students are still trying to figure out where they want to go and what they want to do. Everyone that I've talked to in this series sort of says the same thing, that whether it's students or student athletes, that that's what they like the most. Sure. It sort of keeps them sure. grounded. Absolutely. And why they're there, they were there in the first sure. place. And yeah. This yeah. last uh, summer, I actually had an opportunity to work with an undergraduate student on a university-sponsored uh, scholarship program. Oh, wow. That, so I was able nice. to carve some time out and, yeah. and work with a student. She's actually here this weekend oh, uh, nice. presenting. Oh, that's, uh, that's Downstairs has a poster session. So rewarding. Yeah, it really is. It's very yeah. enjoyable. It's so much fun working with those real bright, energetic students, you know. And It is. And, and I always think, well, I used to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm sort of getting tired. But Sure. Uh, that's good. Well, so what are the things you're doing now with the currently with ACSM? Well, Jack, I have two responsibilities. I uh, have just assumed the position as chairperson of the publications mm. committee within the college. And then I'm also currently chairing a task force on distance education for the college. Oh, okay. And both those, th both those positions somewhat go together. Uh, I, I was going to ask, t tell me a little bit more about the distance learning. 
Right. Well, the idea behind the distance learning task force was to take a look at how the college can better disseminate the information that we have okay. to not only members within the college and not only members who need continuing education credit, but people who are not necessarily ACSM members and people who are more in the general public. I see. Uh, we have a lot of knowledge to give, as you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. And I think the important thing for the college to do is to try to share that information with as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And so the, the online distance learning is, is another way to do that. Has the college been doing that? I mean, I'm not, I haven't kept up with that, or is this totally new? We have, but probably not to the extent that we should nor want to be doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we have our uh, certifications that require continuing education credits, okay. and a lot of professionals who are licensed or certified are required to periodically engage in continuing education activities. Mm -hmm. And it's been a strategic priority of the college to try to expand that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what we have to be able to do is create the content, and yeah, you can get a lot of that content here at the, mm -hmm. at the national conference mm -hmm. or the content that's created by the members, and then to be able to share that with people. Package it, yeah. And, and, and yeah. yeah. So they, they pay a fee, I assume, for, for some, this? Or well, what? some of the courses they can take are actually free. Uh, nice. Other courses, there is a fee that it's associated with it. Um, it really it varies depending upon the topic and mm -hmm. how we've generated the information and how we want to disseminate it to, to our members and others. Are, are CME credits part of this then too? They I mean, are. They're all not CME. No, right? they're not. So there's... They're not. So yeah. there actually are some continuing med medical education yes. credits that are available. Yeah. But there's also some just continuing education yeah, yeah, credits. Okay. Uh, okay. It just depends who you are as a professional and yeah. what you need for maintaining licensure or certification, okay. or or if you just want to continue with the with the acquisition of knowledge so that you do a better job in your profession. Which would also apply, like you said, to the general public, someone that just wants to know more about Correct. topic X. Yes, yeah. exactly. You know, the college has always wanted to play a bigger role in the dissemination of information mm -hmm. to the general public, and I think this is one way mm -hmm. to do that. How do they find out about it, Jeff? Is it through the website? It, it is. Uh, you can find out about it through the website, through other societies. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, other professional organizations uh, might direct their members to the ACSM website. Okay. You can enter in through a portal, and you can gain access to that information. And again, depending upon what you need, sure. there's a variety of choices that you can select from. Okay. Let, let's. Quickly, briefly, you can't because there are, what, five journals now? There are five <laughs> journals, yes. ask you to talk a little bit about publications, which, I mean, you know, MSSE, I mean, talk about a flagship journal. Well, Indeed. it's a fantastic journal, and wow. it continues to create a lot of knowledge yeah. uh, for the profession. Uh, once again, not only for ACSM members, yeah. but really our reach has expanded around the world. We've been in several editorial board meetings the last couple of days, mm -hmm. and to look and see the widespread utilization of mm -hmm. the knowledge that's created by MSE really across yeah. the world. Yeah, uh, that's great. You know, countries as far away as Australia and China. Uh, we are actually getting some interaction from folks in Iran, uh, wow. Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then countries that you'd think would be more uh, likely to participate: uh, United Kingdom, sure. Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, another big one that was surprising was our reach into South America. Oh. Uh, so Brazil uh, happens to be yeah. one of the countries that uh, a lot of people are looking at our, our information. I ran into some people from Costa Rica and different places too that I was very surprised that they they knew all about it and. I think, I think the, the meeting this year has struck me as one of the most diverse meetings. It, it, uh, it there seem to be a lot of people from a, a wide variety of countries mm -hmm. that haven't necessarily noticed before. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've always had a strong Southeast Asian uh, uh, connection, but I think there are more people from more countries now mm -hmm. than there ever have been before. Yeah. Um, wh while we're still on the current, we need, okay. to, we need to get back here and uh, do sure. some more history, but maybe you could talk a little bit about the newest journal. Well, the uh, Translational yes. Journal is yes. 
uh, one that we're very, very excited about. Uh, we felt that there was a need for us to distribute the knowledge about taking the science from the bench top mm -hmm. and putting it into application. Mm -hmm. And so Joe Donnelly is our first editor in chief for the Translational Journal of the American College of Sports Medicine. We're very excited about the uh, early uh, publications that we've been able to uh, release to the membership. And we continue to look for top quality uh, manuscripts so that we can get those, uh, get that information yeah. out there to, to the people that need to use it. I wonder how difficult it's going to be to find that right person that can bridge those two gaps. Well, it and, is interesting. And, and write a piece. Yeah, like it is. That, it is interesting. Know? I mean, it's it's it takes the the special researcher or research team yeah. to take that information give it some application, and then mm -hmm. to test the effectiveness of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of chronic diseases that we've yeah. got to try to find uh, some solutions for. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be a way for us to disseminate that information out there to the healthcare providers, the community leaders, the public health leaders that are going to be able to then implement that and have some positive effect on the American population, but not only the American population, people all over the world. Yeah, and and, it, and it's online. I mean, it's Absolutely. a it's a I don't know what what do you call it? Is it an e-journal? I don't know what the <laughs> what the term is anymore. It's, but. it's a completely <laughs> online journal, uh, which helps its dissemination. So. Absolutely, and and one of the interesting things. I know you've mentioned a little bit about history, but you think about where we've come oh, from yeah. the dissemination of the information in a paper copy yep. that you actually had to go to the library yeah. to read. My students don't know the library yeah, anymore. No, no. <laughs> uh, to a journal mm -hmm. that you can get access to anywhere yeah. at any time. Yeah. Uh, so it's very exciting to mm -hmm. be here and now as a leader of the publications committee as we sort of transition more into mm -hmm. this distribution of knowledge mm -hmm. to people across the world al almost instantaneously, yeah. which is really exciting. Well, before we run out of time, sure. I, I want to get back here, to go backwards now a little bit. If you could tell us a little bit about where you grew up, your hometown, uh, sort of high school and college and, mm -hmm. and uh, some of your your activities and you know did you play sports yourself and um, that type of thing sure. and then uh, as you're going along chronologically and I, I bet you do remember uh, when was it that you heard about this mm -hmm. college sure. and, and how did that come about and maybe when when did you when you joined or uh, first, sure, I'd be first paper I, or whatever I would be happy to share that with you um, like many members of the college, I, I grew up playing sports. Yep. Uh, and when I grew up, there were it was more along the traditional sports. So I played football and uh, baseball mm -hmm. in high school. Where Had was the, that? I played in, uh, yeah. I grew up in South Central Pennsylvania, a little town called Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I'm from Lewistown. I know that. Yeah, so we have that connection. <laughs> I know exactly where yeah. that is. <laughs> and so I went to uh, Cumberland Valley High School. Yeah, no, yeah. And, uh, it's very and, close. And, yeah, and played uh, two sports. Uh, went to Indiana University of Pennsylvania yeah. as an undergraduate student. I was a physical education major, mm -hmm. and I played on the baseball team there. I so played I, at Lock Haven. Uh, those, and, are, those are two rival schools. Between Stroudsburg and Slippery sure. Rock and Indiana. And Clarion uh, and, oh yeah, yeah. Bloomsburg. Man Mansfield. Yeah. That was our, our circuit. Yeah, so I had, I had a really good experience as a physical education major at what, IUP. What years were you there, Jeff? I played at uh, baseball at IUP and went to school there from 1975 to 1979. Yeah, I was a little earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, was the first to go to college in my family. Yeah, so I was a first too. generation college yeah. student. I yeah. uh, didn't really understand what it was all about. Uh, but I had some really good professors there. Uh, I had some people that were able to give me some guidance and provide mm -hmm. uh, mentoring so that I could figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. Because when I got to college, uh, I quickly realized that I couldn't hit the fastball uh -oh. <laughs> as well as I did in high school because guys threw a little bit faster. Yeah, so uh, I knew that's my a shock. I knew it? my aspirations of, of being a professional baseball player. Play, playing with the Pirates were, or the Phillies probably wasn't going to work. It was, it was slim, so I figured I better find something else to do. 
And so I really uh, was blessed <coughs> with good mentors in, uh, in college. Uh, when I graduated, I got a job back at my old high school, uh, back at Cumberland Valley High School as a physical education mm -hmm. teacher. And in those days, you were able to get your uh, graduate education, yeah. and you were able to get it paid for yeah. by most of the, of the school districts. Mm -hmm. And so you had to have it. You had to have within it. Within, I remember, for permanent uh, was it teaching certification. Or yes, whatever. for for permanent certification yeah. and licensure, you yes. actually had to get uh, a certain X number, number of credits, of credits. Yeah. within a six-year period. Yep. And I think the number was twenty-four. Well, you know, that's three quarters of the way. You might as well master's do a master's. Degree. And so that's what I did. So I taught full time. Uh, I remember the days of of being to school at seven thirty in the morning, teaching till three o'clock coaching from 3.30 to 5.30 or 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. and then going to class yeah. from 7 to 10. Where did you take those classes? Then? I went to a school called Western Maryland College. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called Western Maryland College at the time. Uh -huh. It's one of the few schools that's actually successfully changed its name. So it's actually now McDaniel College. I'll be fine. And it, it changed its name because Western Maryland College implied that it was in the western part of the state. Which you would is think not, so. But it's not. <laughs> I was it implies, where it yeah, was. <laughs> it implies that it's a state school, and it's not. Oh, gee. And so they felt like uh, changing their name to McDaniel College, who, McDaniel was the first president of the institution, better reflected their role as a private liberal arts college. Mm -hmm. You ended up fin doing, a, doing a master's there. I did. I did a working master's with, with Sam Case yeah. at Western Maryland okay. College. That's what it was at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought he had the greatest job in the world. I thought a physical education teacher was yeah, a great job. Me too. Yeah. But, but Sam, uh, and what he did and how he interacted with students and how he really mentored me, uh, at, at the time, you had a choice as to whether you could do a master's thesis as your culminating experience, mm -hmm, or you mm -hmm. could just take a couple of extra classes. Mm -hmm. And Sam talked me into doing a master's oh, thesis. Okay. So my master's thesis was on the effects of 12 weeks of strength training on resting blood pressure in high school football players. Mm -hmm. And I found that I really liked the research. It, yeah. was, it was really exciting to do the project. Mm -hmm. uh, I finished up with Sam. Uh, and then went to grad school at Auburn University, and I worked with Dennis Wilson, uh, who was actively involved in the college for, for many, many years. Did you go straight there? I mean, how, how many years were you at the high school? Uh, I was at the high school for six years. So that was enough time for you to go back and forth? It, it was. Doing these classes, doing a master's degree. It took me four years. I can understand. Uh, yeah. To finish the degree. Yeah. And, and in retrospect, that's been really helpful for me as a graduate school dean oh, because we have a lot of students who go to school part time Very good. and I can understand can. the challenges that they have. Yes, yes. The, the family obligations, the need to work, uh, the issues with trying to schedule courses mm -hmm. so that you can get done yeah. in a reasonably short that period is a of good time. Point. Yeah, and so I really enjoyed it, uh, but I knew I wanted to continue on. I, Sam, mm -hmm. was, Sam Case was just a great mentor to me. Was he an ACSM? He was. He was an ACSM. Yeah, I mean, if he and yeah. Dave were friends and all Ab that, I'm absolutely. sure they started out. At, yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, were and they at Ohio State? Ohio they were at Ohio State, State. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, Sam really got me into the research. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of work on the Idita sport, uh, which is similar to the Idita rod race yeah, in Alaska. It's sled dog but it's with and humans. I'll be darned. And so he asked me one year if I wanted to go up to Alaska to collect data oh. on the Idita sport. And Alaska was just a little, it sounded a little too cold for me at the time. <laughs> so, so I passed on that. And there's probably not a day goes by that I don't regret not going up there with yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, but he did help me get started on my career as a, as a member. He said, look, you, you got to join ACSM. What, what year did you finish your thesis, Jeff? I finished my thesis in 1985. And, and then did you start at Auburn that same year? I actually, I actually worked another year and saved some money. Oh, well. uh, I tried to plan ahead a little bit. I uh, and I got a, uh, fortunately I got a graduate assistantship mm -hmm. at Auburn. And so with the money that I saved and having the graduate assistantship, mm -hmm. I was able to probably live a little more comfortably 
than than many graduate students do. My nowadays. wife and I laugh now. We 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 think we had more money when I was in grad school. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the rent was a hundred dollars. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it was it was a really good time for me because I got involved in ACSM. Yeah. I joined as a member in 1984, wow. so I've been a member now for 30 plus years. Yeah. Uh, and when I went to grad school, I continued to be involved. Uh, I got obviously more involved in research activities. Uh, was involved in the central, or excuse me, the southeast chapter oh, uh, yeah. down there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, that's just a great chapter. To so that was uh, uh, Andy Kozar and uh, uh, the people at Tennessee. Right well, that was after. that would have been Ed Howley. Ed, yeah, uh, Ed Howley. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don Franks. Yes, uh, yes would have been yeah, there. Yeah. Um, you I know, think Kozar was earlier. I, I think he was. he was in the earlier Southeast group. He, he was, uh, but it was really. I probably couldn't have been in a better situation. Mm -hmm. Auburn had just started a PhD program. Uh, Dennis Wilson uh, was heading up the program mm -hmm. and was the department chair. And he ended up being just another fabulous mentor for me yeah. and really yeah. helped me understand the importance of working with students and getting students involved uh, as professionals. Um, and when did you finish your PhD and then where did you go? So I finished my PhD in 1990, okay. and my first position was at Indiana State University and the IU School of Medicine in Terre Haute, Indiana. Okay. And I went there, and, and once again, I, I don't know if it was just good luck. Uh, I think there's a certain bit of that that, mm -hmm. that uh, has followed me in my career. Uh, but I had a great experience there. I had an opportunity to develop a lab. Uh, I spent three years at Indiana State University. But I, but I really wanted an institution that was more research focused. Mm -hmm. So I, I started to look at other opportunities at R1 institutions. Mm -hmm. And so I got a position at the University of Kansas in 1993, uh, moved to Lawrence, Kansas, and spent uh, eight good years at the University of Kansas in Lawrence. Uh, worked in, in terms of developing another lab uh, building up the capacity of the lab, uh, gave me the opportunity to work with doctoral students. Mm -hmm. Many of them, uh, who I'm very proud to admit, have gone on to better careers than I've had. <laughs> they've, they've ended up doing <laughs> fabulous work. And you sent them all to ACSM, I bet. I, I sent them all to ACSM. We were very active at that time in the Central States mm -hmm. chapter of mm -hmm. ACSM. Uh, it was a requirement to be a student member. It was a requirement of the lab to present. Uh, you know, we tried to, to publish in MSSE uh, and, and really tried to show them the importance of being a professional mm -hmm. and how it can really help your career, mm -hmm. uh, but also how you can give back to the organization. Yeah, that's nice. I, I don't, we're running out of time too fast here, but I wondered, um, I mean, I, I first met you, I think, through Mark Robertson. Yes. And your yes. book on the introduction to exercise science. Yes. I mean, is that in the second or third edition? We're now, actually in the third edition now. Yeah. And we're coming up on uh, almost 10 years wow. of, of the book. Uh, and I guess it, it must be doing okay. It's, it's doing very well. It's doing better than I ever thought it would do. Uh, you know, it's funny, you, you, you enter into those endeavors, and I know you've written a, a textbook that's widely used yeah. and, and, and highly recognized. I think when you go down that path as an author the first time, I mean, I would have been just happy if somebody would have read it. Right, I know. And, and, and it's, done, it's done very well. Uh, we've had a good partner in Walters Kluwer. Oh, yeah. uh, they've been very helpful to us. But, but you're right, our first interaction was back in 2007, 2008, That's what I thought. when I contacted you and said, hey, I want to talk to you a little bit about yes. the history of the college yeah. and the importance of the college in, in um, you know, a variety of areas, public health and, yeah. and basic science and applied science. Well, that was nice that you, you put that in there because, I, I, as you know, you need some context. You do. You know, and you do. The, the young students don't know. That's I right. Mean, they're, they're just and, and so I have actually a chapter. The first chapter has a little bit of history mm -hmm. uh, about the college. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important for students, as you've just mentioned, to have an understanding of the context of Absolutely. where the college came from, 
uh, and how it's continued to develop and progress all these years. Mm -hmm. Before we're totally out of time, Jeff, I wanted to sort of go back where we started now. And uh, when we were talking then, you were at 125%. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you're chairing two new committees. Yes. So we're probably close to 200%. We, we probably <laughs> are, yes. We probably are. If I had to, to, uh, to indicate my percentage effort on an NIH grant, I'd be in trouble because... Uh, Luckily, don't, you don't, don't have to uh, do that. Uh, that's right. Uh, but you know, Jack, I've always felt that it's been very important to give back to the college. Yeah. Uh, it has helped me so much in my professional career. Mm -hmm. Just to have the opportunity to come to meetings, whether they be regional meetings or national meetings, uh, see the latest and greatest science that's being mm -hmm. presented, uh, meet other people, uh, you know, I can remember going to my first meetings and, and seeing, you know, the experts and just mm -hmm. being in awe. The big names, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the big names, just yeah. being in awe yeah. of, of, of having read their material and being able to, to meet them in person. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? They were just the greatest people. That's what everybody says, yeah. that, that I just walked up and yeah. I can't, couldn't believe I was talking to Bill Haskell. Yes. You know, and he just said, oh, come on, let's, let's yes. talk more, you yes. know. And, and the other thing, and you, I'm no, I know you would agree with this, is the word family. A lot, yes. a lot of people I've talked to yes. Very much so. see this as their yes. home away from home. You know? it, 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 they really do. It's just that opportunity, whenever you come to a meeting, it's that, it's that chance to re-engage. And mm -hmm. now we can obviously interact, you know, phone calls and emails no, and but it's not the same as coming to a meeting and yeah. having the chance to catch up yeah. not only on on sort of the the personal lives that we all have but our professional lives yeah. to see what we're doing and how things are going and mm -hmm. I really look forward to that I haven't missed I've never missed a meeting wow yeah I've never missed a meeting in since 1984 uh, and it's something I'm very proud of yeah, I, I think the, the, the feeling with a lot of people I talk to is, gee, I, I need to go back home to work, to, to rest. <laughs> <laughs> You're going about 20 hours a day here. You it, know? It, it does, and it does go fast. <laughs> it uh, does. Yeah. You know, you have meeting after meeting, and you want to see some presentations, and yeah. you have students that are presenting, oh, so yeah. you have to be there to support them, yeah. uh, and the week just flies by. It, yeah. it, goes, it goes, in my opinion, too fast. I, yeah, it's like these interviews. <laughs> they go way too fast. That's right. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you so much, Jack, for the opportunity. I really yeah. appreciate the chance to sit down and chat with you. Well, thanks. It's, uh, that, that was fun. Uh, very, very fun.